Good afternoon, everybody. We're pleased to be here with uh, our common sense conservative leader and the next Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Polyev. Pierre Polyev is a common sense conservative who believes in the free market, someone who is a born and bred Calgarian, and someone who's a proud Albertan that knows that our energy sector is world leading. It's the way to solve the climate issues today that we're seeing. He is a common sense conservative leader who knows that hard work used to pay off in this country. He travels this country all since he's been leader and the pain that we're hearing today is very real. And it's all caused after eight years of Justin Trudeau with the support of Jagmeet Singh and the NDP. There used to be a thing called the Canadian dream in this country. A Canadian dream that has turned into a nightmare for many. Because after eight years of Justin Trudeau, He's doubled rent, doubled mortgages, and put cruel taxes like the carbon tax on top of all the other misery and pain that he caused, which has led to the people that live here to say, this is not the Canada that we used to see or that we used to experience anymore. And for those newcomers that came here, say that that Canadian dream that was promised to us is not something that we're experiencing here. We were sold something, but after eight years of Justin Trudeau, that Canadian dream is gone. But it wasn't like that before Justin Trudeau, and it won't be like that after he's gone. Because a common sense conservative leader, the next Prime Minister of Canada, Pierre Polyev, will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Because he's going to bring home common sense and bring home that Canadian dream again. So I want to introduce our next Prime Minister of Canada, our common sense conservative leader, Pierre Polyev. Thanks, Jazz. Appreciate it. Merci beaucoup, Jazz. Merci beaucoup, Jazz, uh, d'être là ici, uh, de supporter nos plans de gros bon sens, de couper taxes et impôts, bâtir des logements, réparer le budget et stopper les crimes. Parce qu'après huit ans, Justin Trudeau et Jake Mitzing n'en valent pas le coup ni la criminalité, ni la corruption. Euh, ça, ça va mal pour les Canadiens. Après huit ans de Justin Trudeau, tout coûte plus cher. Inflation a atteint ses niveaux les plus élevés depuis 40 ans à cause de ses taxes et déficits inflationnistes. Le travail n'est plus payant. Vous le gagnez, Trudeau le prend. Le coût de logement a doublé. Ça coûte trop cher pour la grande majorité des jeunes Canadiens d'acheter une maison et plusieurs ont peur de perdre leur appartement à cause des hausses de le loyer. Le coût de logement a doublé. Le loyer a doublé. Les paiements hypothécaires ont doublé. Les mises de fonds nécessaires pour payer son hypothèque, pour, 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 pour acheter une maison, a doublé le, le journal international, le magazine international, l'économiste, a dit hier que quand Justin Trudeau est arrivé au pouvoir, la famille moyenne pouvait payer l'hypothèque sur une maison moyenne avec 39 de leur chèque de paie. Et maintenant, c'est 63,5 c'est des chiffres qui proviennent de la Banque royale. Donc, ça, c'est dans huit ans de Justin Trudeau, une, presque le double, le, le parti, il a presque doublé le parti d'un chèque de paie nécessaire pour payer son hypothèque chaque mois. On voit la criminalité, et le chaos, les drogues et les désordres qui, dans, qui sont présents dans les rues. Celles sont les conséquences des politiques radical de Justin Trudeau, appuyé par le Bloc. Le Bloc appuie 100 des politiques économiques de Justin Trudeau. 100 Le Bloc veut un plus grand État fédéral. Beaucoup plus d'argent des Québécois ramassé à Ottawa. Ironiquement, le Bloc a voté pour 500 milliards de dollars de dépenses discrétionnaires de Justin Trudeau. Et je ne parle pas de dépenses sur la santé et les aînés. Ça, c'est dans la loi, déjà. 
je parle des autorisations qui viennent devant la Chambre des communes chaque année afin de financer la bureaucratie, les consultants et des grands programmes fédéraux contrôlés à Ottawa. Le bloc est arrivé des douzaines de fois dans un an pour supporter Justin Trudeau et ses dépenses inflationnistes, centralisatrices et expansionnistes. Le bloc supporte un plus grand gouvernement fédéral qui coûte cher, mais très cher aux Québécois. Le Bloc est en effet en coalition avec Justin Trudeau parce que Yves euh, Blanc, euh, François Blanchette partage l'idéologie de go gauche de Justin Trudeau, de dépenser, de contrôler et de diriger par l'État fédéral. Et M. Blanchette abandonne les Québécois pour favoriser les politiques radicales de Justin Trudeau. Les deux partagent ça. En fait, les deux sont d'accord sur tout, sauf que le lieu de la capitale du pays. À part de ça, Blanchette favorise toutes les politiques de dépenses, de contrôle de l'État fédéral que Justin Trudeau avance à la Chambre des communes. Les conséquences sont graves à cause de l'invasion dans les champs de compétences des Québécois par le fédéral et par Justin Trudeau. On voit que le problème de logement devient de pire en pire. Au, à Montréal, le loyer a triplé depuis l'arrivée au pouvoir de Justin Trudeau. Des autres régions souffrent pareil. Et que, que fait le Bloc et Trudeau? Ils envoient davantage d'argent aux maires à travers le Canada qui sont incompétents, comme le maire de Vancouver, le maire de, le reste de Calgary, le maire reste de Toronto, de Montréal, de Québec, pour bâtir davantage de bureaucratie au lieu de bâtir des logements. Heureusement, la vie n'était pas comme ça avant Justin Trudeau et le Bloc, et ça ne va pas être comme ça après. Les conservateurs de gros bon sens vont rétablir un pays qui récompense le travail, qui, qui est abordable pour les familles, et qui livre des rues sécuritaires. Nous avons un plan de gros bon sens, de couper taxes et impôts, bâtir des logements, réparer le budget et stopper les crimes. Et ça nous amène au budget 2024. Je sais que M. Trudeau a déjà doublé notre dette nationale, ajoutant beaucoup plus de notre dette que tous les autres premiers ministres combinés avec l'appui du Bloc, mais ça doit arrêter. On ne peut pas continuer d'ajouter à notre dette. Ça va causer une pire inflation. Juste aujourd'hui, l'économiste en chef de la Banque Scotia a dit que les dépenses gouvernementales empêchent la Banque du Canada de réduire les taux d'intérêt. Déjà, la Banque Scotia a dit que les dépenses gouvernementales ajoutent 2 au taux d'intérêt pour les familles qui ont de misère à payer leur hypothèque. C'est pour ça que nous avons des demandes, des revendications de gros bon sens pour réparer le budget. Premièrement, nous revendiquons la fin de la taxe sur la nourriture et nos fermiers en annulant la taxe carbone pour euh, nos producteurs euh, avec la loi de C-234. Ça va enlever les taxes sur euh, l'énergie utilisée par nos fermiers pour qu'ils puissent nous livrer la nourriture plus abordable. Deuxièmement, nous, de, nous revendiquons que le, gouvernement bâtir, que le gouvernement favorise la construction de logements et non pas la bureaucratie, en obligeant des municipalités de permettre 15 plus de construction comme condition pour recevoir des fonds du fédéral. On a déjà des conditions pour les transferts aux municipalités dans le fonds de l'essence, mais ils font rien, ces conditions-là. On veut éliminer ces conditions innécessaires et centralisatrices et les remplacer avec un contrat que le fédéral va verser l'argent aux municipalités qui augmente les permis de construction de 15 par année. On va payer pour des résultats. On veut qu'il y ait plus de construction et il va y avoir plus d'argent fédéral pour des municipalités qui, qui réussissent à bâtir. Les municipalités comme Victoriaville, Saguenay, 
Trois-Rivières qui ont accéléré les constructions. Et il va y avoir des pénalités euh, pour des municipalités qui empêchent la construction. Euh, C'est comme ça qu'on va inciter des municipalités d'enlever la bureaucratie et de livrer des permis de construction plus rapides pour des prix plus abordables. Troisièmement, nous revendiquons un, un plafond sur les dépenses avec une, une loi dollar pour dollar. C'est bien simple. Nous proposons que le gouvernement gère ses finances de la même façon qu'une mère monoparentale, des aînes, une couple des aînés ou un petit ou moyen entreprise. C'est-à-dire, pour chaque nouveau dollar de dépense, le gouvernement devrait trouver un dollar d'économie. C'est comme ça qu'on va plafonner les dépenses et nous permettre d'équilibrer les budgets et réduire les taux d'intérêt et l'inflation. Donc, encore, mettre fin à la taxe sur la nourriture et les fermiers. Bâtir des logements et pas la bureaucratie. Et plafonner les dépenses avec un dollar d'économie pour chaque nouveau dollar de dépenses pour réduire les taux d'intérêt et l'inflation. C'est ça le gros bon sens et nous n'allons pas supporter un budget si ça n'inclut pas ces trois revendications. C'est ça le gros bon sens, c'est ce que nous allons livrer. Merci beaucoup. And now in English. <coughs> thank you very much everyone for being here. Thank you Jazz and thank you to the great truckers who work in this incredible facility, moving goods and services across our country. I think they will agree. When they fill up their tank, when they go shopping themselves, these truckers will tell you that after eight years, Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost, crime, or corruption. He's not worth the cost. You see that every day at the grocery store. When you take the items out of uh, and put up, run them through the scan, and you see that number getting bigger and bigger, and you sometimes feel like you have to put things back in the cart and return them to the shelves because you can't afford to pay the bill. This is a common story now. One in 10 Torontonians are going to a food bank after eight years of Justin Trudeau. One in 10. You imagine that? One of the biggest and wealthiest cities in the world. Two million food bank visits a year in Canada. That's a record smashing increase of 32% since Trudeau took office. Next year, we expect a million more annual visits because food prices continue to rise faster than wages. After eight years of Justin Trudeau, we've had 28 dead bodies in, a free, in freezers outside the St. John's Hospital next to a dumpster because their families can't afford a burial or cremation. These in Aramukto, 50 military families are eating at the local food bank. Military families who risk their lives for us are not getting enough to pay for their groceries. After eight years of Trudeau, there are now 35 homeless encampments in Halifax, in one city. These encampments are now visible everywhere you go. The food professor, Sylvain Charlebois, reveals that after eight years of Trudeau, not only is the price of food going up, but the amount Canadians have to, to pay for it is going down. In other words, most families are spending less than is necessary to buy their families an affordable uh, basket of, a nutritious basket of food. That means people are going malnourished. Scurvy, scurvy is making a comeback after eight years of Justin Trudeau. These are the real world consequences of Justin Trudeau and the NDP doubling the national debt, raising taxes on middle class and poor Canadians. Trudeau famously said that the economy is not about numbers, it's about people. Well, I hate to break it to you, Justin, but numbers affect people. In fact, as Pythagoras said, numbers rule the universe, and numbers are the things that you see on that receipt at the grocery store. Numbers are the things on the price billboard at the gas station. Numbers are those little digits on the screen when you're looking at your monthly mortgage payment. If you're brave enough to bring it up on your screen, those are all numbers, Justin. 
And those numbers impact how much food are in the bellies of people, or whether they have roofs over their heads, or whether they have to work 70 hours a week just to avoid eviction. Numbers rule the universe, and unfortunately the numbers are cruel for Canadians after eight years. We know this policy, the, these results are the direct uh, consequences of Justin Trudeau and the NDP policies. When you double the national debt, you drive up demand, which bids up goods. You print $600 billion of cash, and that causes inflation, just like it has everywhere and always over the last 5,000 years of economic history as far back as we can go in human records. Whenever governments create cash, they cause inflation. And what is he doing now? He's out making multi-billion dollar announcements of inflationary spending that will drive up the cost of your living again. It's like he's a... He's spraying billions of dollars out of a fire hose, but it's more like spraying gasoline on the fire. He's like Justin Trudeau promising to fight inflation is like a pyromaniac promising to fight a fire. He's the one that lit the fire with his taxes and his deficits. And every day you see him in these photo ops, know the money that he's spitting out of his mouth is money that will come out of your pocket, just like it has for the last eight years, and all with the help of Jagmeet Singh. Common sense. The good news is, life was not like this before Justin Trudeau, and it won't be like this after he's gone. He's not worth the cost, crime, or corruption. Canadians are good and decent people. They do not have to give up on the things they used to take for granted, like affordable food and homes, all for the ego and incompetence of one man. Common sense conservatives have a plan to axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. In doing so, we will restore the Canadian promise, the promise that was made to our, my friend, uh, my friends, uh, all of my friends behind us today, but particularly to Jazz Raj, whose family came here with, with a, a small bank account but big dreams. And he went on to start a business, build homes, and become a member of parliament. The promise made to my family when I was born to a 16 year old uh, unwed mother who put me up for adoption to two school teachers, and they raised me to believe that it didn't matter where I came from, it mattered where I was going. It didn't matter who I knew, but what I could do. And that's the country that my wife came to as a refugee and in which her family has succeeded. That is Canada's promise. Though it is broken now, we will restore it. And today we demand the government reverse the policies that have destroyed the middle and working class people. But we are making three specific demands for Justin Trudeau for the forthcoming budget. First, ax the tax on food and farmers by passing C234. That will take carbon tax off farmers' barns and drying to provide food price relief to Canadians. Two, build homes and not bureaucracy by requiring cities permit 15% more housing completions each year as a condition of receiving federal funds. Three, cap spending with a dollar-for-dollar -dollar law to bring down inflation and interest rates. The dollar-for-dollar -dollar law will require the government find one new dollar of savings for every new dollar of spending. By capping government, taxpayers and the economy can catch up with the cost. We can balance the budget again and bring down inflation and, and interest rates. This dollar-for-dollar -dollar principle is the one that single moms, small businesses, and seniors use to run their finances, and it is what we are demanding the government uh, implement as well. Again, acts the Trudeau tax on food and farmers. Two, build homes, not bureaucracies. And three, cap the spending with a dollar-for-dollar -dollar law to bring down inflation and interest rates. This, these are common sense demands, and if we don't get them, we won't support the budget. Common sense conservatives will continue to fight for, for everyday Canadians who work hard, pay their taxes, and play by the rules until the carbon tax election comes. And in that election, we will have a simple choice between a costly coalition of J Justin Trudeau and the NDP who tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense conservatives 
who will axe the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Thank you very much. Let's bring it home. Thank you so much. We'll now have time for a few questions from the floor. There, uh, Clayton Demain with True North. You said you'd, uh, in the past that you'd work toward meeting Canada's NATO target of spending 2% of our GDP on defense. Where would that money be spent? And under your do dollar for dollar plan, where would you cut to account for that massive spending? Well, where would it be spent? On the front lines, better equipment and better resources for the men and women in uniform, uh, more reservists who are uh, not only equipped to prepare Canada for an armed conflict, but also can apply the military skills they learn in the civilian economy. Uh, where will we, how will we do the dollar for dollar rule? Well, we're going to cut back office bureaucracy, botch procurements, and foreign aid to dictators, terrorists, and multinational bureaucracies. We'll bring that money home and invest it in our military. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Steve from TVO. Hi, Pierre. Could you describe your relationship with Doug Ford? Uh, he's the Premier. I'm the leader of the federal opposition and the next Prime Minister of Canada. And uh, my uh, relationship with him is the same as with everyone. I will work with anyone to ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Uh, Michael Drapak, CBC News. Thanks, Mr. Polyev. Um, six premiers are now calling for a first minister's meeting with the prime minister on the carbon tax. He is not committing to that. What do you think that says about Mr. Trudeau when he refuses to meet with premier leaders as a group? And what does that say about federalism and how it should work? Merci beaucoup. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Justin Trudeau is, uh, has a radical agenda to massively expand the size, cost, and power of the federal government, which comes at, exp at the expense of working people and seniors. It, it crowds out everybody, including the premiers. He wants to dominate over all of the regions of Canada and impose his will. He's imposed an unconstitutional anti-development law, C-69, and a, a back-breaking carbon tax opposed by 70% of premiers and Canadians. If Justin Trudeau is so sure of his plan to quadruple the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre, he should have the courage to sit down with our premiers and explain that to them because they oppose his plan. They know that his tax is going to take money away from hospitals and schools who have to spend more on their energy, take money out of our uh, local social services who will be paying out more assistance to people who can't afford to eat. It will force more social breakdown because people uh, can't keep it together. So he should have the courage to sit down with the premiers and explain why he believes he needs even more money. In every single province, the federal carbon tax applies. Middle-class Canadians pay more than they get back, according to the parliamentary budget officer. And the Prime Minister, by the way, he should stop gaslighting and attacking the premiers and other common-sense Canadians. He is lying when he says the carbon tax makes you better off. The Parliamentary Budget Officer has calculated that in every province, 60% of Canadians pay more in carbon tax costs than they get back. Everybody knows it. Justin Trudeau knows it. He needs to stop lying and sit down with the Premiers and admit that his carbon tax is just like him, not worth the cost. And in French. En français. Justin Trudeau est le premier ministre le plus expansionniste et centralisateur dans l'histoire de notre pays. Il a engrandi le rôle de l'État fédéral en réduisant les pouvoirs des provinces et des citoyens. Il veut ramasser tout l'argent à Ottawa euh, et tout le contrôle entre les mains de, de lui et ses fonctionnaires dans la capitale Ottawa. Ce qui m'étonne, par contre, c'est que le Bloc l'appuie. Le Bloc a voté pour 500 milliards de dollars des dépenses centralisatrices 
inflationniste, expansionniste de Justin Trudeau. Donc, pourquoi le Bloc, un soi-disant parti de souveraineté, veut-il ramasser l'argent des Québécois à Ottawa? N'est-il pas une contradiction en ça? Le seul parti qui a voté pour, une, pour moins de gouvernement fédéral, pour une petit, un État plus petit et un Québec et des Québécois plus grands, c'est le Parti conservateur. Nous voulons réduire le, la taille et la, le pouvoir de l'État fédéral pour agrandir le pouvoir des Québécois et de tous les citoyens du Canada. Nous sommes le seul parti comme ça, un petit gouvernement avec des grands citoyens. J'insiste que le premier s'assoie avec les premiers ministres du Canada pour écouter leurs demandes et leurs revendications et qu'il arrête d'envahir dans les compétences de, du Québec et les provinces. Thank you. This will be the final question. Sarah Tomlinson, Radio-Canada. Lequel des programmes du gouvernement Trudeau abolirez-vous pour équilibrer le budget? Les soins dentaires, les soins à médicaments ou des garderies abordables? Je vais éliminer euh, la Banque de l'infrastructure de 35 milliards de dollars. Je vais éliminer la, la rive Cannes de 60 millions de dollars, qui allait coûter 80 000 en passant. Je vais éliminer le, le fond vert d'un milliard de dollars qui est déjà, on a 150 millions de dollars qui sont mal dépensés ou perdus pour payer des petites amis libéraux. Je vais éliminer, je vais couper dans les consultants qui consomment maintenant 21, 21 milliards de dollars. Ça, c'est 1400 dollars pour chaque famille canadienne. canadienne. C'est un énorme gaspillage d'argent et je vais couper tous ces dépenses-là pour réduire le coût du gouvernement et le coût de la vie pour les Canadiens. Thank you very much.